Okay, yeah. So, Tanushree, uh, what we did yesterday, we just we just uh, did a small activity to learn the experience of all the candidates during the student body election process. That's what we did yesterday and uh, got a lot of feedback over there. Uh, so, today let us take this forward and uh, let us get into the lesson what uh, electoral pol politics actually stands for, what it means and how it works in India. It's a very interesting topic. You will learn a lot of things about the Indian political system, how it works, how we choose our leaders, and what is all the you know the drama that goes on over here. Uh, Tanushree had a question uh, asking that if an an election both the parties get the same number of votes, no one is majority or minor, minority, then who will win? Uh, obviously, there is no winner over here. Both of them have the same number of votes, means that would have to go for a re-election. Yeah, so that would have to go for a re-election. Uh, but uh, India is such a vast country that uh, India is such a vast country. Uh, you know, this kind of thing normally does not happen. I've never seen it happen up to now. But uh, if it does happen, definitely there would be a re-election. Yeah. Okay. So. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes, excuse me. Yes, sir. Sir, um, sir, um, what? What was that? I could not understand you. Sir, this is This is fourth lesson. Democratic politics, fourth lesson. Sir, do we have to do this now? Shall I teach you? Once you come to school, I'll clear all those doubts. How many lessons and all that is there? Okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so now the question is, why elections? Now, why do we need to have all this drama when I'm saying that it is a drama, there's competition, there are people fighting, there are people talking bad about other people. Why do we need to go through all this process? Why don't, why doesn't one person just come up on stage and says that I am going to be your leader or I am going to be the person who is going to rule the entire country? Why doesn't that happen? Why do we have to go through this entire process of uh, electing a leader and spend so much of money, crores and crores of money is what is spent actually in this entire election process. Why should we go through such a complicated and time consuming process? Over here, to answer this question, elections can lead to change in the policy of the government. Whenever a government is ruling a country, now we have been having the BJP in rule in our country in the central government since the year 2014. So, uh, a reasonable number of years, that is almost uh, seven years now, this is the seventh year they are ruling our country, the BJP. So, they have put down a set of policies, right? These policies might make some people happy, some people might not be happy with this policy. Some people think that there is too much of Hinduism in this policy, there is too much of Hindutva in this, uh, maybe some people are getting neglected. So many various kinds of opinions are there. So if the person, the common man wants a change, obviously during the next election, he will not elect for this government, he will choose something else. So someone else might win. So. This gives a chance for us to change the way in which the governments put their policies for the citizens. The governor initiated can become the chief minister if he is impressed by the speeches. People are unhappy with the ruling party and vote against it in the next election. Whenever the people are unhappy, they can always make this party lose and another party will come into power. And the winning party obviously forms the government. So the election can lead to economic development in a state or a country. So this is a very, a very important trigger, you know, for change, economic development or economic change in the country. Uh, it has uh, many times we feel that uh, the years, almost you know, 60 years, which we have had the Congress government at the center, many people feel that there has not been any kind of development in the country. But that is not true. Development has happened because we were in a very bad situation after independence and over the years, we have seen plenty of development, plenty of changes happening in our country. So it is not as bad as you know normally people say. But yes, of course, the, this is that development could have been much more uh, 
corruption which we normally see in all the government offices that definitely has to come down and in the years of independence after independence we have seen this corruption also going up to a very bad uncomfortable scale so if people common man wants a change from all these things whatever is going on definitely he will choose something else he would choose a new government to come and head the center okay so the party need not have resigned after his party lost elections the country which have elections are said to be democratic sorry there is a small spelling error over there right right okay so continuing this why do we need elections the people can choose their leaders and from choosing their leaders these are the people who actually make the laws for us the member of parliament the member of legislative assembly the member of parliament these are the people who make the laws at the center and the member of legislative assembly these are the people who make laws at the state level so ultimately when we are choosing our leaders it means we are choosing the people who are going to make laws for us okay they can choose who will form the government and who will take major decisions they can choose the party whose policies will guide the government and law making and as a rule of the people is possible without any elections if all the people can sit together every day and take all the decisions that also is possible because you cannot even imagine 130 crore population of india trying to come up with a decision is it possible you can do the small that? experiment in your house in your uh, class itself you know once all of you come uh, on from monday onwards to school we can do the small experiment i can give you a small decision to be taken the 30 members who are there in a single division or even the 70 students both the divisions put together if a decision has to be taken you can only imagine how much of fighting how much of uh, what do you say you know disagreement all these things are going to happen uh, a small example once more uh, during school if you remember when you were all coming to school whenever there would be a free period or free period a free period and uh, someone would take you out to the ground so now the first 5 minutes or first 10 minutes would go in the argument that what game would have to be played am i right whether to play yes. volleyball or rather to play football or which game to play how many number of people to be taken why should they be taken whom to exclude whom to include all these things in fighting and disagreeing for that you would lose easily 10 to 15 minutes of that free period that is just 70 people of you 70 students and if it was one division just 30 students with so many of disagreements so you can only imagine our country such a huge country with 130 crores of population do you think they can come to any kind of a concession or a agreement at any time do you think it's possible no sir ah there will be plenty of disagreement fighting lots of fighting lots of disagreement even now during the recent lok sabha session during the monsoon session you would have heard or you would have read in the newspapers i don't know how many of you read the newspapers but you would have read in the newspapers that there was so much of fighting happening in the lok sabha between the ruling party and the opposition party people were not agreeing to so many things which the government was trying to make a decision on and that is just 543 members of the lok sabha that are there so even with our elected representatives going to the parliament and taking the decisions on our behalf still there is so much of disagreement and so much of fighting happening over there so that is the reason why you know people cannot represent all the things people cannot be there everywhere that's the reason they elect their elected representatives and these people go and take the decisions for the people so people can choose their representatives at regular intervals and change them whenever they feel that the work is not happening therefore elections are considered essential in our times for any representative democracy so elections are a very important part a very key element for a representative democracy
So is this part about why democratic elections are required clear to everybody? Anybody having any doubts? Any doubts by anyone up till now? No, sir. Okay. 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 So we always call ourselves as one of the one of the world's largest democracy, and our election process is also said to be one of the biggest, you know, election processes in the entire world because so many people come out and vote. And uh, because of our population, that is the reason why we are called as one of the largest democracies in the world. We are the only democratic country in the world with such a huge population, and our entire election process is a huge event on its own. So, what makes this election democratic? We are a democratic country, and we have a process of elections. Now, these elections also must be democratic. the elections that you had for your student body it was held in a totally democratic way can anyone tell me how you can you know whoever stood for the elections can they give their own examples do you think that what elections we had in our school was a democratic one come on i need an answer my question is the elections that you had in your school just recently last week only this elections was done do you think the center election process that we had was it a democratic election yes sir yes sir anushri says yes rujna says yes why do you think it was democratic Now that you have said yes, I want to know why do you think that it was a democratically held election? What elements of democracy did you see in this? Because everyone got a chance to vote. Okay, that's from the voting side. Yeah, okay, everyone did get a chance to vote. Yes, that's fine. What else? the majority people win majority people won but no, there was only each category there was only one winner that is how it happens everywhere in each category there is only one winner everybody does have a right to vote but have you observed that whoever gave their name in the nomination whoever had sent their name as a message to imran sir or ranjana ma'am everybody's name was included did you notice that we did not delete anybody's name from that list whoever had given their name that i want to stand for elections i want to stand for this particular post everybody's name was included we did not delete even a single student's name even the newer students who had joined very recently to the school even their name also was included in the list so me answer why we say it as democratic is each and every student had an equal opportunity over here everybody has the right to vote and everybody voted equally that is fair but the candidates themselves the people who are standing for the elections themselves each and every person who had given their name everybody got a fair chance to stand for the election we did not deny anyone that opportunity do you agree with me on this point correct yeah so in the same way how your student body cabinet elections were held in the same way in the same democratic process our country's elections are also held any person who wants to stand for elections can stand for the elections it is not that this person should be having 10 15 years of uh, you know political experience or he should be having some lots of money or lots of wealth or he should be extremely qualified person it is not at all like that each and every citizen of india 
if he is about 25 years of age has the potential to stand for elections he will not be denied that position he doesn't have to be a male or a female or a wealthy person or a poor person that is totally irrelevant only two criteria are there for a person to be eligible to stand as a candidate one being he is a citizen of india and the second one being he is about 25 years of age that is all only these two criteria are there do you think that is fair yes sir don't you think that people only qualified people should be standing for the elections hmm anyway let us see these conditions what make the elections a democratic process everyone should be able to choose that is absolutely right and this means that everyone should have one vote and every vote should have the same and equal value right it is not like one person's vote will count as two or five votes whereas the other person's vote would count as only one that will not the case there should be something to choose from parties and candidates should be free to contest elections and should offer some real choice to the voters right there should be a quality amount of choice i cannot have a election saying that there is only one candidate and people please come and vote for this candidate do you know how elections happen in north korea everybody knows about this country called north korea right yes sir and who is the leader of north korea can anyone tell me or who is the president of north korea who can tell me the name of the president of north korea kim who kim kim my next door neighbor ashish kim jong hmm kim jong kim jong un he is the president of north korea and we all know that north korea is a highly you know secretive a very highly conservative country we don't get much news from this country and we also know that it's possible that this country might be having uh, nuclear weapons all those things so but i'll tell you a very funny story about north korea now we all know that kim jong un is the president of north korea right so how did this person become the president if you ask mr kim jong un how he became the president he will say that he has been elected by the people mr kim jong un the president of north korea says that i have been elected by my people that is why i am the president of north korea do you know how elections happen in north korea can anyone have does anyone have the most any uh, idea about how elections happen in north korea Sir, there are no elections. He is dictator of that country. No, you are wrong. There are elections. It happens in a very funny way. The election in North Korea, the election in North Korea happens in such a way that there is only one person standing for that election. That is Mr. Kim Jong Un. No other person is standing for that election. And when people line up to give vote for that person, there is a huge amount of military also standing with guns next to these people who are casting, putting their vote. So means if that person <laughs> does not put his vote, he would probably be shot by the military. So every citizen has to go into that polling booth, that place where they put the vote. They have to put their vote for Mr. Kim Jong Un and then come out. This is the way elections happen in North Korea. And very proudly, North Korean government they declare that we have had elections and Mr. Kim Jong Un has elect been elected the leader of North Korea. so do you think this is a democratic election no sir why kya problem hai people have gone willfully they have put their vote and they have made him the winner why don't sir, you think there is no equal to stand there is no equal to put vote fully vote jump correct correct absolutely sahi thi that was also absolutely right only one person standing in the election 
and that also almost like you know forcing those people to put their vote <laughs> that is the situation in north korea and uh, they very proudly declare that we have had elections and mr kim jong un is the winner this is the situation they call it elections but definitely it is not a democratic election so the important part of an election to be a successful election is that it should be held democratically and after him his son would rule yeah definitely because before kim jong un his father kim jong il he was the president so father died and then son became and now after this kim jong un passes away his maybe if he has a son he might become or maybe i think now his sister is in line to become the next president so that kind of situation <laughs> okay so elections will be popular will be successful only if they are held democratically and each and every citizen of india has a fair chance of standing in those elections the choice should be offered at regular intervals and elections must be held regularly every 5 years the candidate preferred by the people should get elected and elections should be conducted in a free and fair manner where people can choose as they really wish they cannot be forced to make a choice they cannot be held at gun point saying that only this person must be elected each and every citizen of india must have a free and fair choice to choose whichever person he wants to make the leader his choice right that is the idea of having a free and fair election so is this clear to everybody up till now what have we have learned the democratic part of an election yes sir anybody having any kind of doubts no sir okay right so quickly let us recap what we did up till now today over here we learned about the you know the conditions why elections are held in india and what is the need for elections in india how we choose our leaders uh, the importance of making the choice and having my own elected person lead the country and then we also learned about how elections actually are elections only if they are democratic if the elections is not a democratic process i cannot call it as a election because people cannot be forced to make a choice the choice should be made as the people wish themselves so that is how elections must be conducted right so the remaining part of this lesson we will continue once all of you come to school that is next week we will do it face to face because it's a extremely interesting lesson uh, we will have lots of discussions and debates and uh, we will get more into this lesson right so that's it for today have all of you please take care and so you have already yeah tomorrow uh, is a festival so there would be a holiday tomorrow right we meet back on saturday okay students yeah that's it bye 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 sir bye sir